JP Morosi on the Friday Inside Corner. Can Twins fans catch a break, please? And thank you. They were just beginning to jive, and we saw Carlos Correa hit in the hand back-to-back -back at bats. Is it something, JP, you can tape? Is it something he's going to need surgery for? I have so many questions. What do you know? Yes, Lauren, good morning. Well, what we know right now is it's a very nervous day in the Twin Cities as they await further word on Carlos Correa. Our understanding is there's going to be some more imaging done on that right middle finger that was injured in one of those hit by pitches yesterday. And Lauren, the, the concern is this. As long as it is a non-displaced fracture, which a team spokesman said last night was a possibility, if it's non-displaced, he certainly would miss likely some time, but it would be perhaps in the weeks area. It would take weeks for him to heal uh, and might be out for most of May. But if it ends up being a displaced fracture where the bone would have to be reset and potentially have surgery, which again is, is not known at this point in time, but that could be something that could require more than a month, maybe even two months or longer than that. So that to me is, is the real concern here. If, if you hear the word displaced today, that is bad news indeed for the Twins. Now, from the st standpoint of their infield, they could either have Nick Gordon play short, which was what the case was last night once Correa had the injury, and then keep Jorge Polanco at second, or they could uh, obviously have Luis Arraez come into the lineup. He is a very versatile player. Right now, though, Arraez is on the COVID-related IL, so that's a concern right now for the Minnesota Twins. So it's been a very, very strong start for Minnesota overall. And the one point that I'll make, Lauren, finally on Correa, is while they might offensively be able to somehow cobble things together and, and, and replace them in the lineup, his defense has been electrifying. Mm -hmm. Of course, not just this year, but for years before this. And it's that defensive presence in the middle of the diamond that I think would be perhaps even harder for the Twins to replace than Correa's bat at this point mm -hmm. in time. Hoping for non-displaced today. Get him right, hold place in the central until he comes back, JP. We were looking at the Mariners' outfield production the other day on one screen, and then we saw Kyle Lewis hit the ball forever on the other, and we thought this has to happen. When? Is it soon? <laughs> Lauren, hopefully for the Mariners in the next couple weeks. Now, he's begun his minor league injury rehab assignment, as you alluded to. And, and I think the one thing the Mariners are saying right now is they want to be very cautious, deliberate, just given how much time Kyle Lewis has missed. And yet there is this excitement and perhaps a little urgency for the Mariners to get him back in the lineup because they know how dynamic he can be when he is healthy. Of course, uh, he was the AL Rookie of the Year just a couple of years ago. And you look at right now the personnel the Mariners have in the outfield. They know that Mitch Hanniger is going to be out for a while. That's a concern. Last night, in a loss, a one-run loss, Julio Rodriguez 0 for 4, three strikeouts. Rodriguez and Kalnick are such a huge part of the Mariners' future, and yet their struggles in the near term are, from a Mariners standpoint, certainly hampering their ability to compete in the American League West, given how well the Angels have played. But also, you have to have that fear of, at some point in time, are they hurting their own development the longer they struggle at the major league level? So it, it does appear to me, Lauren, that as soon as Lewis is ready and healthy, he will be an everyday player for the Mariners. And perhaps at that point in time, either maybe Kelnick or Rodriguez moves out just to make sure that they can work on their swing and get their confidence back up. Because right now, the Mariners are struggling and they're, they're two key franchise cornerstones of the future are part of those offensive struggles. And certainly, Lewis, it's, it's a case of wanting to make sure that he's ready to come and, and be sure. there when he's, when he's active, Lauren. But they know how much they need that bat, especially with Hanniger out and the young guys struggling. So next month or so, going to be telling for your Seattle Mariners. I know you're a fan, JP. I know all about you. <laughs> Adley Rutschman, we are ready for you. One step closer. Give fans some good news on a Friday. What do you got? Yes, well, he is coming up now to AAA, at Rushman and D.L. Hall as well. So the future is getting ever closer for the team that you followed, Lauren, growing up in the great Indeed. state of Virginia. You think about the Baltimore Orioles right now. This team is getting better and better. I've, I've actually heard from different people about how good their pitching is. It's been one of the talks of the American League East right now. I think that if Rutschman comes up and performs, and same thing with D.L. Hall, that we could see both of them making an impact on this Orioles team in the next month to six weeks. I think certainly a first half call up is very possible for both Rutschman and Hall. We know, of course, Rutschman, the injuries that he went went through the last year or so, but he has now made very, very quick work of double A indeed. 
He is now getting promoted and check out that smooth delivery from the left side there. DL Hall, you see that that cutter that he's throwing there, the breaking pitch. I mean, he really has a fully developed repertoire, especially against left handed batters, as you see it there. So I think DL, DL Hall and Rutschman, they get promoted in Triple A on the same day, Lauren, and maybe at some point to the show on the very same day, perhaps in the next four to six weeks. Wouldn't that be something? I was reading the Baltimore Sun and they called Adley a unicorn. Can't wait to see him. <laughs> JP Morosi on the inside corner.